In this short video, we're going to look at how you'd actually drive the demand curve. And we're not going to do this simpler way. You could think that, well, it's not actually simpler. It's, um, it's simpler in a way, but actually it's much more tedious. The tedious way would be to repeatedly derive the optimal consumption bundle varying the price of one of the goods, right? So let's say there's two goods, X and Y. You could sort of fix the price of Y across all these different things and fix income across all these different potential problems. But then you could try repeatedly solving for different values of the price of X. And then you could sort of relate the price of X to how much of good X this person buys. Now that, as I said, is quite tedious. And fortunately, there's a simpler way. What we can do is we could solve for the optimal consumption bundle for this consumer. But rather than plugging in a particular numerical value of the price of, you know, let's say good X, what we could do instead is we could leave the price in as a variable. Now we're going to treat it as a constant because when the consumers, you know, deriving their optimal consumption bundle, they're going to treat it as a constant. But we can leave it in there as a variable so that then it will tell us uh, what amount would be demanded at a particular price. And we just plug in that price and it spits out the answer of how much is demanded rather than repeatedly solving this problem for different prices. So let's look at how we do that. Let me um, give a particular example here. We're going to assume that the utility function for the amount of good X and the amount of good Y consumed is equal to 0. Uh, 0 0.5 times the natural log of the quantity of good X consumed plus the 0, uh, 0 0.5 times the natural log of the amount of good Y consumed. Okay, And lastly, we're going to normalize the price of Y to 1. We're going to assume that the price of good Y is 1 and the income is 1. Hence, the budget constraint is price of good X times the quantity of good X consumed, plus the price of good Y, which we're just assuming to be 1, times the amount of good Y consumed, has to be less than or equal to their income of 1. Okay, so let's, we're going to say that that holds with equality because we know that a consumer would never want to leave some of their income unspent. Uh, that would be basically leaving a happiness on the table. So. Um, so let's, um, let's now go through and solve it. You can use any of the solution strategies that I went over in the last lecture, or last mini video. Um, the one I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the ratio of marginal utilities. So we're going to set, so set marginal utility of good X over the marginal utility of good Y equal to the ratio of prices, which is the price of good X over the price of good Y, which in this problem is just equal to 1. Okay, so now we're going to plug in what the margin utilities are by taking the derivative. Okay, so the, mar uh, the margin utility of good X is the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to X, which is just 0 0.5 over X. Okay, so this, this part that I've written so far is, is um, the margin utility of X. And then we're going to divide it by the margin utility of y, which in this problem, take the partial derivative utility function with respect to y, becomes 0 0.5 over y. Okay. And again, that's equal to the price of x over 1. Uh, so these 0 0.5s cancel, leaving us with y over x is equal to the price of x. Or y is equal to the price of x times the quantity of x. Okay. So now we can use the information from the budget constraint to help us finish solving this problem. So we know the budget constraint tells us that the price of x times the amount of x, that's the amount spent on x, plus the price of y, which is just 1, times the amount of y consumed, that's the amount spent on good y, is equal to their income. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find this relationship between y and x that we found in the first step of solving this problem, and we're going to plug it in. And this is going to give us 
the price of x times x plus, substituting in for y, price of x times x is equal to 1. Or, solving a little further, the amount of good x consumed is equal to 1 over 2 times its price. Okay, so this, this gives, under the assumptions of a particular utility function that we assume represent this consumer's uh, preferences, uh, and a certain price of good y and a certain income for this consumer, we've been able to derive the amount of good x that this person would consume as a function of the price of good x, which notice is in the denominator here. So if the price of good x goes up, this person is indeed going to buy less of it. Now recall, to get the overall market demand, what you next want to do is you'd want to add up the demands across all the different individuals in the market. Or each individual, if you knew their utility function, um, you could derive their uh, demand curve indiv individually. And then add them up and you have the overall market.